What consistency do you use for a Dutch pour? Depends on how you want it to look. However, the thicker the paint, the less it's going to mix. So I'm going to show you the difference between thick, medium, and thin paint with the Dutch pour so you can decide which one is best for you. Now, in this case, I'm going to start with the thick paint, do the pour, and then I'm going to add water to the already mixed up paint that I have here, red, yellow, and green. And then I'm going to do the next one and so on. And I'll show you the consistency along the way. Now I did color my white with a little bit of green because bright white in a video just doesn't show up that well. And it's hard to see the texture when I get up close. So it is off white with green, yellow, red, and just a little bit of green for an accent. And I know I'm using all the primary colors. So there is a chance that I get a little bit of mud, but this is kind of an autumn pour, so a little bit of brown and a little bit of green, nothing wrong with that. So now let's try the thick Dutch pour first. All right, so just a refresher, this is how thick. So this isn't the thickest that I use, but it's the thickest that I would use for a Dutch pour, otherwise the paint just doesn't move. So this is mound upon a mound, poop emoji. We're gonna call this thick. Problem always with thick paint is getting it moved everywhere. It's easier to do with a tool like this than with the hair dryer because it doesn't move very well with the hair dryer. And you'll see that in just a minute. And again, I'm always using my, or I'm using my little mini one. I'm using the cool setting, and for these small ones, low power, I want to use the high or else nothing will really move. Not a lot happened there. Now, we're just gonna do, let's do it this way, just a little line. You can see how it kind of squiggles. It's another way to tell how thick the paint is. And I, th I decided I wanted to do a little bit of white, so I made some white up too, so same thing here. Not a huge amount, but a little. All right, so we will get down and dirty in just a minute once I'm done, but you could see the paint didn't really move. And because I'm using white glue, I still get some cells in the middle there, but I didn't get a ton and I didn't get a lot of movement. I'm gonna use the same amount of paint for the next ones and you'll see so much more movement for the thinner paints. All right, so I tested consistency, added some more water to the yellow and definitely some to the green. So now we're all, Good there, let me get the yellow again, so you can see. So now we're, I mean, we're barely leaving a mound and then going away, no mound upon a mound like we had before. So this is the medium consistency. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Now here, because the paint is so much more thin, we can actually use my hair dryer to spread it out.
more for these corners. Just so I'm doing everything the same way. Pop in some yellow. See how it didn't wiggle? Because it's a little bit thinner or thicker. There's no wiggles there. I don't see I don't see if you can notice there but see how the color is kind of invading the white that means that this is kind of a cell activator which is a good sign for something like this so So now you can see that moved much quicker. It went over everywhere and I got a lot more cell, cellular creation because that paint is a little bit thinner. It can um, interact with each other a little bit more because it has less surface tension. So it's mixing more. And as time goes by, I'll probably get a couple more. You can kind of see them popping up here a little bit bigger. So again, we're gonna put this to the side and go back to thin. All right, so now we're ready for the thin. Uh, I did add a little bit more water to the green so it, it matches these ones, but you can see I let them run about the same amount of time, so they're considerably thinner. Another secret is the, the closer you get to thin, the less water you have to get to really shift the consistency of the paint. When it's really thick, you gotta put a lot of water in to get even down a little bit. But once you get to the med medium, you only need a little bit of water to really get into the thin. So add water slowly if you're trying to get too really thin. And just like before, we'll start with our off-white green. Add a little bit more this time. So you saw how much quicker that actually moved than before. Um, I didn't need to add any extra on the outside, it's just way thinner. Didn't quite get enough in the middle there. This is so thin, I can't even do the little strips I had before. Need a little bit more of that. But you see how quickly that sank underneath and all the colors I'm getting on the outside? That's a good cell activator indicator like I mentioned before. And it shows that this white paint is denser than at least the red and the green, I don't have any home. I guess on the yellow, it's close too. And now let's blow it out.
That little section there was unfortunate. But I don't think it detracts from the test that we're doing. So let me let these sit for a few minutes. We'll come back and review them head to head. All right, so here we have all three. On the right is the thickest, on the left is the thinnest. So right out of the gate, just looking at all three at the same time, you can see that the thickest spread out the least and the thinnest spread out the most, which is kind of self-explanatory. The more liquid it is, the more it's gonna spread out. The second thing that I notice is the, the brightness of the colors. The colors on the very thick one are the brightest because they didn't break up as much. The paint stayed together way more. Middle is middle of the road, but they're still pretty bright. I mean, not quite, not quite to this level, but they're still pretty bright. And then this side, you lose a lot of the definition of the colors and it, it uh, mixes a lot more. So that's one of the big differences there. Also, cellular creation. Here, these, this one, we did have a couple cells that created, but nothing like the medium thin and the very thin created way more cells. So if you want little defined cells, thicker. If you want bigger uh, and more, more different colors inside the cells, you got the medium. And then if you want tons of little cells and cells that kind of run into each other, you want the very thin. Now with this particular mixture, I was using the, uh, we have it here, the Craftsmart white glue. Um, and I was using it one to one and then added water to get the consistency. I didn't get any cracking here on the thick. However, on the thin, I started to get this flocculation, which is where the, the paint quits adhering to itself and kind of breaks apart. So this is called flocculation. And there's a couple of other places where it happened, but that's really it for here. I think what happened is the, the green was a little bit more um, thin than the rest. And so that was what caused that to happen. On the very thin, it, it is happening everywhere. I mean, you see the flocculation in the red there, you see it in the edges everywhere. So a couple of things you can do about that. One, you can use higher quality paint. Now I was using Blacrylic, which is definitely the student level acrylic paint. Uh, a higher quality paint has uh, more pigments, better binders and less filler. So you're likely to have that happen. If I would have used Amsterdam or um, Windsor and Newton or something, I wouldn't have gotten near as much of that. Um, the second thing you can do is maybe take something like one of the more professional pouring mediums, an artist loft. You know, I have a bunch here. I have some uh, Liquitex, just a little bit, you know, maybe a 10th, a 20th, you know, in this case, I would have used like a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, added it to it just to give it a little bit more strength. That could have helped that. So ultimately my preference is to use kind of a middle of the road, not quite super thin, pouring medium if I'm not gonna be adding anything else. If I am gonna be adding something to give it some strength, like some Liquitex or some GAC 800 or Artist Loft pouring medium, I do like to go a little bit more thin because then I can get more um, cellular effects happening. But either way, now you know, and now you can make a decision depending on what kind of colors you want, how much you want it to spread out, what kind of cellular action, and you can get a really beautiful Dutch pour. And if you're having trouble with your Dutch pours, this is the video you need to watch next.